Why'd you bring me up here? I think we got a huge opportunity to finally reveal what our true family is. An opportunity for us to tell people the story of how we came about. Yeah, because people have so many questions all the time. So many questions about what made us who we are today. And really where it starts from is our patriarch, dad. That's right. And so what I think we should do is, is open up the doors to a podcast where we talk about how at one point dad was an orphan. Yeah. And he has built an empire. Mm -hmm. So here we go. Let's do this. Last time we talked, we went through some some uh, some tough conversations. You know, when you when you grow up, uh, you said to, you say this the best, uh, and, and and obviously truisms are, are probably the the best thing because it's it's true, obviously, right? And so, at eight years old, you lose your mom, okay, and clearly, that's absolutely devastating. Right, you said that at eight years old is the worst time to lose your mom because you you had just enough time with her that you understand who she is and what kind of love and char- charisma that she has. Yeah, eight years old is um, between I would say, uh, depending on the person, between eight uh, excuse me between five and ten years old, you become conscious as a human being. Sure, you know I mean obviously when you're two years old you know what's going on, but I mean in the womb. I mean, they can prove that you have uh, brain waves, okay? But um, between five and ten, as a young man, uh, you become conscious of yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, you're, and so um, a, a boy to have two parents in his life—that's why God planned things. Um, to have two parents in their life is so important because they both bring something really, really important to the the growth of that young man's life. Um, and then so if, so if uh, God forbid, one or both of those are taken out. We know that it's got absolutely devastating effects on a child. You really lean on God to fulfill uh, those roles. And, and as a human being, you, you reach out. God took your mom. Okay. Yeah. And Utica, New York. And you lived in Utica, New York with an extended family, and you all, again, chipped into the same pot, and you lived as uh, what, what's described as communal living, yeah. right? And um, kind of where you left off was, is, and we kind of skipped a little bit, um, unfortunately, Grandma passes away. Mm-hmm. Your grandma. And uh, Papa being a little bit more of a military brute, uh, 82nd Airborne Ranger, yeah. World War II, and Korea. How would you describe what happened to him now as you are really his age? Uh, really, he, you are, you're 20 years his senior now. You've had, obviously, plenty of time to reflect after his passing. He died he right was around 1964 when he died. Yeah. yeah. So you've had plenty of time to reflect. Looking back on his reaction to her passing away. He totally lost it. He... Um, so where we kind of left off was my mom uh, made me promise her that I would take care of my dad. And it boiled down to uh, it was about two weeks after my mom had passed away and my dad and my aunts, who uh, my Aunt Lee kind of ran the family, um, uh, gotten a big heated, finally in an eruption, a volcano. You, you felt it was coming. Oh, absolutely, 100%. It was just terrible. I mean, I seen it coming. As a little boy, I seen it coming. And, uh, it, and Blake, all that rang in my head was the promise that I made my mom. You know, I mean, and, and, and you know how I am about uh, promises. They, you just don't make them, you know. <laughs> and uh, all that, that was the Holy Spirit, I believe, which is, a, a, I believe a promise is a vow. Uh, it was God's seal on that promise. So what was Papa's reaction? That's that's where we were. He snapped, and uh, it was in the um, hallway on Dudley Ave, um, which is the name of my dog. Uh, and he which said, the, "Which is the name of your puppy now?" Yeah, you know, swearing and out of his mind, mad. Um, make up your mind. Are you coming with me? 
or you know staying with your aunts not even close like that and i can remember my aunt lee who was only five foot i don't know if she was five foot she might have been like four seven uh and my aunt vi standing behind her crying and i and i turned and i looked at my dad who was six foot one you know in mint condition uh how old would he have been at that time he, now you got to remember he's 100 percent disabled but he kept himself you know he had uh, f- uh he was shot paratrooping out of a plane and broke his hips and he would have been uh 42 i said the word dad and and the word meant dad as in it was a cry to make amends with my aunt lee it wasn't picking sides you know and he 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 took it as i i chose to go with him and and i guess in my heart of hearts maybe that's what i did because i never i never i never argued that and i never said take me back home to new york he he picked me up and we walked we walked out the door down the steps um he owned a, a black and white pickup. We got in the pickup, drove to the lumber yard, and he bought a bunch of lumber material. And uh, I sat in the truck uh, with Andy. That was my dog. He was a black lab. And Andy was like a special friend. He he never left my side. He was four or five years old at that time. And, I mean, if, if I got up and walked into the kitchen to get a drink of water, Andy would follow me. I sat in there while he picked out this uh, lumber material. They loaded the truck. We went to our house in New Hartford, and he built this uh, camper, a makeshift, four walls and a roof, <laughs> and the door, uh, the door, not the doors. Uh, he put two windows in it that were just sliding, had two two uh, pieces of wood, that, and, the, and the door was, had a little handle on it, and it'd slide, and it was open then. And... Uh, he built that almost overnight, and two days later, I was on my way to Michigan. Hmm. With everything, we own that house uh, in New Hartford, which is a suburb of Utica, and uh, we were on our way to Michigan. Do you remember ever calling ahead? Because he, he, Papa was from uh, Michigan. Grandpa was from Michigan, right? Yeah. And so, do you remember him ever calling and saying? Never. He really? didn't, as a matter of fact. Really? No. Nope. Just left in the middle of the night. Nobody, nobody, and I know this for a fact, he didn't tell anybody. So two weeks after your mom passes away, your gran- grandpa, my dad, yeah. your dad, my grandpa, uh, makes a wooden camper in the back of a 1950... Well, it was, at the time, it was... Uh, 1965. It was, a. Uh, I don't know how, I mean, I'm a seven years old, I don't know, or eight years old, I, I don't know how old uh, the truck was. Right, but some, some are right there. But it was a, it was a pickup truck. Yeah. And uh, not extended cab, just a regular pickup. There was no such thing, really. Yeah. And so then he makes a he makes a camper, yeah, or a, a, a little house for you guys overnight. And he stayed up. I remember looking out the window, um, because he had the porch lights on, working through the night. Hmm. <laughs> it so was so He was so very wild. intentional in what he was doing. He knew exactly what he. He was, was out of his mind. Yeah. Didn't know what to do with himself. Yeah. He was, and and the way I dealt with it was he d- dealt with how i was handled after that was he 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 lost it in the moment did you have any comprehension of what was going on or was just kind of a whirlwind none zero you thought that he was just making a fort or something i mean you're eight years old i had no idea what was going on so you thought that he was going to reconcile with the ants and they had been arguments before i didn't think that you didn't Mm -mm. i there was such a terrible fight i was so in the i'm going to use the word scared i i learned not to be scared but back then i didn't and i was so scared like out of my mind scared that uh something bad was going to happen did you remember having any conversations with him or um he was just in a, in a vision in a tunnel yeah no zero no nope. he 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 wasn't talking to anybody i i do remember having a conversation with my brother uncle mike came over uh, he he come back. I think the fight was so bad that they called him. He was going to uh, college, and they. I think my. I'm guessing this is all speculative. I think they called him and said, "Hey, we just got in a big fight with your daddy. He took Billy, and uh, he left. And I don't know. 
Billy's in harm's way, yeah. maybe. I, I don't know what happened, but so, my brother showed up. And so majority of people don't know that you have an older brother that's 11 years older than you um, and obviously grew up in in that same culture. Yeah. Um, so he came in, in. Do you remember the count? Did him and Papa or him and the aunts have yeah. conversation? No, the aunts I never seen again. And you were never uh, privy to those conversations. You didn't you didn't. No, I was there. I, I was my brother uh, showed up and uh, he, he he was 19 at the time, right? Yeah. Uh, Roughly, yeah, and uh, he was in college, and he was very serious with a girl, you know, get married serious, yeah. and uh, was in college, very smart. He pulled into the driveway, and um, they got in a, I, you know, again, I just could see that they were arguing and not not fist fighting, but uh, confrontational. Oh, big, just terrible, screaming. Yeah, and um, then he, my brother. Uh, come in and got me said uh, hey Will uh, he called me Will like my dad did and uh, he said hey Will uh, dad's taking you to uh, Michigan Like, what is that okay Disneyland yeah, yeah. what's Michigan right eight years old now. I'm like okay what well, you know good right no I said are you coming and he's like no I, I gotta stay in school and uh, and I said okay, and I'm like, I, I remember this is so stupid, you know. But I remember saying to him, uh, "Am I coming home?" And he said, uh, "Well, I don't know what's going to happen." And I said, uh, "Are you, why won't you come with us?" And he said to me, uh, "I can't." And I said, "And this is where it gets like I." I'm an idiot, but it's just stupidness, you know. But I, I'm eight years old. And he said, I said to him, what if somebody asks me if I have a brother? Hmm. What do I say? And he said to me, just tell him you do. It's the last I ever talked to him. And so from then until many years later so i gonna, was an adult and we're gonna get there so papa makes this this camper uh him and uncle mike uh who's he obviously returns back to college okay and do you remember the trip from uh, again you said through the night so you fall asleep i'm assuming because obviously you don't drive yeah. and you wake up in a different world yeah well the next my dad uh worked through the night to build that camper and uh I had fallen asleep, and the next morning I woke up to a, a truck with a, a really cool kind of camper thing on it. It was a box, basically. He was moving stuff um, out of the house into the back of this uh, pickup. That happened all that day. Then about, I'm going to say, I'm guessing, but, you know, like around supper time or so, I mean, he's got to be exhausted, you know, be, because he's, you know, he uh, put me in the camper with Andy. We headed uh, to, down the New York Turnpike West. So you were in the back seat. You were in the back of the truck. There's no back seat. No, I mean, that's what I'm saying. You're in the back of the. You're the back. No, of the I'm truck. in the front seat with oh, Andy I think he's and in him. the camper. Okay, all right. Yeah. He put all our stuff in the in camp. the camper, and then you and him were in the obviously the front. Yeah. And so, um, what was your first experience when you hit Michigan? I mean, you stopped somewhere, right? Yeah, we stopped. Um, I don't think it was Michigan. I think it was like, you know, like uh, just before Niagara Falls, like Buffalo. And um, he stopped at a rest stop. We slept because I think he was just exhausted. Had to have been, yeah. You know, and uh, we slept. There was a, at the rest stop, there was a, like a souvenir shop attached to it. My Aunt Lee um, took my hand. Uh, put in my hand, which in the Lebanese faith, uh, there's a tradition, a passing uh, of the torch, so to speak, of like Esau and Jacob, you know how like they wanted their their father's um, blessing. blessing. And they do it with rings. And uh, my Uncle Mike, not your Uncle Mike, my Uncle Mike, um, had a ring with uh, a cedar leaf on it which is um the uh, tree that's the symbol of the lebanese culture and my mom wore this um ring her entire my 
entire conscious life, I never seen her without it. And uh, you, you know what I'm talking about. I've showed it to you. And she took my hand and give them to me um, when she kissed me goodbye the day my dad walked out and during that fight the last time. And so – I, I, I can't hold these things. I got them in my pocket, and I know how important they are. And I'm scared that I'm, you know, I mean, I'm eight years old. I'm going to lose these things. And I know that it's our family heirlooms, my mom's ring and my uncle's family ring, which was his dad's dad's ring. And uh, she give them to me. Uh, there was a little souvenir shop, and I went in there, and there's this, this little chest it's a little cedar chest about the size of it's about that big and you open it up and on the outside it says niagara falls and i'm i'm looking at that and my dad walked up and he goes what are you doing and and, you know nicely you know and i go i'm just looking at this you know blah 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 and he goes well get it and then and that wasn't like my dad yeah get it you know he had no idea i had those rings Oh, he didn't? Zero. Interesting. He didn't know I had my mom's ring. And um, What do you think he'd have done? If he knew I had those he'd rings? Have oh, absolutely. 100%. For sure. Without so. Because that was something they talked about before. Because when my mom died, my Aunt Lee went up and took her wedding rings off at the funeral. Took them off her hands. And her and my dad got in a big fight about that. But anyways... I uh, had those rings, and I was thinking, you know, I if I had that chest, that little thing, I could put them in put that them in there, yeah, yeah. because I'm going to lose these. Yeah, man. right. Yeah, I'm a, You're a little boy. You know, and it was like you trusted me with the Ark of the Covenant. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So so you, you obviously bought the chest. Yeah, I said, my dad said, get it. Yeah. And I said, no, you know. You know. Yeah. And he's like, no, get it. And so uh, obviously – I have it to this day. Yeah. And I have those two rings. Amazing. And I didn't tell my dad until I graduated high school. And Really? Uh, yeah. Wow, wow, wow. What did he say? Was he kind of surprised? Had to have been. Nope. Nope. He was that stoic. Not just stoic. Never never said anything. I I said, hey, Dad, I, I got – Mom, you, go uh, ahead. I was going to say, were you nervous to tell him? No. No, I I had been to the I, I had been drove to the point of I'm my own man now, you know. No, I, I I wasn't. I was like, I thought he'd you know like it'd be sentimental and but so much so much bad stuff had happened, you know. I that. Do you think that he he him being stoic and not wanting to talk about it was because he had regrets? The two things I told you we never talked about was God or my mom, and I can't answer for him, Blake. I mean, you know, I was eight years old. My mom died. I needed, I needed, I needed to talk to somebody, and I never talked to anybody until you and Billy and Brandon were old enough to do this is, like, um, unbelievable for me. I know. Un. Believable. I know it's difficult right now, but I, I definitely think it's going to be therapeutic. And I know that you are so selfless that um, getting this off your chest is going to be not only therapeutic for you, but you told me one uh, thing that's really stuck with me when I was a very young boy, uh, six, seven, eight years old, was that you prayed that I wouldn't have to go through the same things that you went through in order to know, understand, and love God like you love God. Right, mm-hmm. and so quite frankly, it's very therapeutic for me because I've heard these stories. I didn't know the details about the going to the lumberyard, and I've heard about the pickup and that kind of stuff. So these details to me are very important. But what we need to, and what this isn't necessarily for the world to hear, is for our, my kids to hear, because you had that prayer for your children. I also have that prayer for my children, meaning I want them to be able to learn not only from my the lessons that I have. Uh, or I'm passing on to them, but also the generations that will come before me and your stories. One thing when you have grandparents, the relationship with a grandparent and a grandchild is completely different than parents. You would understand that, right? Mm -hmm. And so your relationship with my kids, I need them to learn from you 
And that's what I think our country is missing, or at least our culture is missing, is the, our communal living that we have similar and kind of duplicated, a, a little bit bigger from when you grew up, okay, is getting, is the true family atmosphere of accountability and love and affection, and you've poured God into the center of it. I'm proud of you, really proud of you, because I know this is difficult, but I think it's going to be good for you.